Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Multifarious Nature, the owner and creator. Thank you for joining me today. If you're new, welcome. Um, feel free to subscribe below by hitting the subscribe button. And if you'd like to be notified when a new video is posted, uh, you just click that little bell and you'll be notified. And then as well, if you if you like what you see, please hit like so I know um, what you guys are enjoying. If this if you're a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for joining me again. I have a bunch of new items in the shop to show you guys, or well, I should say not a bunch of new items. I've restocked a bit, so stocking up for the holiday season in case you want to um, buy some yarn for yourself or uh, treat someone else that you know. So I'm just gonna start right away because this might be a long video. So let's dive on in. There's a bunch of yarn restocking. So let's start with Witch's Brew. And I'm not going to get too much into the specifics of each yarn just because I have a bunch to go over. It'll all be listed below um, as well as, of course, on the website if you want the actual specs like your yardage and all of that. This is 100% um, Superwash Merino. And Witch's Brew, you can see it is a gray uh, variegated yarn. There's some nice dark purple in there. Little, just little hints of red here and there, just throughout. So this is a fun variegated. And I will tell you that this is um, 150 uh, grams. So this is a larger skein of yarn. Your eyes are not deceiving you. This is definitely a larger skein of yarn. So that's Witch's Brew. And then um, we have Raspberry, which is a gorgeous tonal. It's, cut, it's showing up slightly darker in this video. There we go. Now we're getting closer to the actual color. It is just what the name is. It's a raspberry red color. And this is on um, the 20-60-20 blend. So that's uh, 20 percent super fine alpaca, 60 percent superwash merino, and 20 percent nylon blend. So I have some more raspberry in the shop. Then we have one of the newer ones that I've added more. So this is scarlet. It's that nice deep red. almost like a slight halo of black kind of overlay, but it is definitely just a really deep red. And that's a tonal. And this is also the 150 grams of yarn, 100% superwash merino. So it's scarlet. And I apologize, I'm going through these quickly, guys, but um, I've also mentioned these in prior videos and they are listed on my shop. So these are pretty much just restocking. This is Teddy. So this is a nice neutral kind of um, a bit of a peach color all over and then you get some brown throughout there. This is a beautiful variegated yarn. I feel like this with cranberry, which I will show you shortly, uh, is just would be beautiful together. And this is also 150 grams. And this is a blend, let me see here, Teddy. So this is the 80-20. So this is 80% superwash merino, 20% silk blend. So it's got that nice little bit of sheen in there from the silk. So that's Teddy. And then we have white pine. My other, I don't really want to call things Christmassy, but it's my other Christmassy color. So this has, um, let's see here, this is the 50-50 blend. So 50% superwash merino, 50% silk. So that's why you can see that beautiful shine. There's the quite a bit of silk in this. It's very, very soft. And this is 100 grams. And that's white pine. So if you want your kind of I guess you'd call it like traditional Christmas colors. These would be my traditional Christmas colors, scarlet and white pine. This has silk, this does not. So you can see, of course, this is much shinier. So the 
um, that's white pine. And we have cranberry. And this is a nice, like, earthy brick, almost a brick color, uh, red. Turning a bit more brown there. It's pretty close to this color that was showing up. I also have, of course, pictures on the website that you can see. This is 150 grams, and this is that superwash merino. 100% superwash merino. And this is the one that I feel just will look gorgeous with Teddy. Don't you think that's a beautiful blend? And it, ah. so this is your tonal, this is your variegated. Just put those together. I think that would be gorgeous. So cranberry again, cranberry. All right, and um, then we have Withering Heights. This is a gorgeous variegated gray with purple running throughout, light purple hue to it in areas. And this is that 50-50 blend, 50% uh, superwash merino, 50% silk. So again, that gorgeous sheen shine. These have beautiful drape. This would be excellent in a shawl. You could also, of course, make a top with it, but I just feel like shawls, oh gosh, it just drapes so well and with that sheen. Just be absolutely beautiful. So that's Withering Heights. All right. Sorry, guys. I just like I feel like I just scrambled through that. So a bunch of restock of yarn, um, trying to stock up for this, the holiday shopping coming up here. So if you've been looking um, to buy certain colors, I now have multiple skeins in basically all of my colorways, except for any one of a kind, which you can understand why, one of a kinds. Um, I also, uh, in the mystery mini skein, I know I've mentioned this in a past video. I won't show you all of the, the mini skeins, of course, because that's the whole point. It's a mystery mini skein, and you don't know what you're going to get when you purchase it. But it could be anything from uh, 10 grams of yarn to 20 grams of yarn. They are all minis, and they're mostly superwash merino um, blends. It's pretty much what they mainly consist of. I actually dyed up quite a few more um, this weekend while I was dyeing these other colors. I went and die crazy yesterday. So here's a couple more, just to give you kind of a preview. These are some more mystery mini skeins. So if you were to purchase a mystery mini skein off of the website, these could be some of the colorways you may get. You can see they're definitely a bit more Christmassy looking, kind of holiday oriented. I was in the Christmas spirit this weekend while I was dying. I just really wanted to dye up some beautiful reds and uh, the touches of green and so those are some more mystery mini skeins that are going to go into the mystery mini skein bin <laughs> so i just reach on in there when um, someone places an order if they purchase the mystery mini skein i'll just grab one out of there and it could just be anything it could be 100 percent peruvian wool it could be um, a merino silk blend a merino nylon blend you never know what you may get that's the fun of it. So uh, some other new items in the shop. I have a new progress keeper. So these will vary. I have just a couple in the shop and they're gonna, they're not gonna look exactly alike because they are, you'll see here. So they're stone. They're made to look like gold, kind of a, like a fool's gold if you want to call it that. So there's little inclusions that are open that have, look like little gold crystals in there. So I have just a couple of these in the shop and each inclusion is going to be different. So this is a rather large inclusion. I have uh, one in particular that has a rather small inclusion, but they do all have a uh, inclusion of some kind in there. And I know this doesn't focus very well, but of course I have the photos on the website as well if you wanna see them a little bit closer. So this is one of the progress keepers. And again, it has that little lobster clasp. So you can hook it onto your work. And then I have a few row counters. These are the analog row counters. And this one is, just reminds me of winter. 
So there's a blue crystal there at the bottom. Glass crystal. And then this one is the little uh, movable progress keeper, if you will. And it's white and blue kind of striping going on there. Just reminds me of ice. So this is the, like the ice kind of progress keeper or row counter, analog row counter. And then I have a red analog row counter. This has a little red glass bead on the bottom. And then the little movable progress keeper here is kind of an amber color, amber glass bead, and then um, like a little amber plastic bead on there that was upcycled. So I have just a couple of these in the shop, guys. Um, most, of, not all of these, some, some of these are from deconstructed jewelry that I've, I've purchased. So um, I can only make so many and that'll be it. I just can't rebuy these beads. So, um, but some of the beads I can. So we've got this little beautiful multicolor, kind of a smoky glass bead at the bottom. And then the little progress keeper part that's removable has this little green glass crystal bead here. It's a green multicolored one. And then a little blue, like smoky blue color. You can see that a little bit better. And the green little glass bead on the bottom. So that is another analog row counter. And again, if you've not ever used analog row counter, which I've just recently started using one because I made it and I love it. So you can use this for counting rows. You can count up to 100 um, with just using this. You can count further than that if you basically write it down. So you write down, okay, this is gonna be 200 and then you start going through from one to 200, or from one to 300, uh, the 100 turning 200. But to keep it simple, it goes to from one to 100. Um, you have your little progress keeper here, and that is to show um, your like tens place. So you don't need this for the first 10 rows. So all I do is I take this, and I just con I connect it right here below the zero. So it's hanging from where the charm is at the bottom. And then I just go one, two, three, four, all the way to the bottom. That's 10. Then when you want to go to 11, you'll put that little progress keeper into the one spot here, which is the tens. And then this becomes 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then you'll move this to the two. And then it goes 21, 22, 23. So it's a lot like an abacus kind of. I mean, it's not exactly like an abacus, but it's that idea. Um, so then you can count your rows and you don't have to keep counting, you know, like every single time you go, if you're supposed to be doing, I don't know, 10 rows of a repeat, right? I, that's what I've used this for. So I'll plop this on my um, needle at the beginning of the row. It also becomes then a, um, a row marker. And you just go through and then that's one row, two rows, three rows. And then when you get to your 10, you know you've completed 10 and then you can always replace it with a different um, stitch marker if you just want to keep going from there and you don't need to keep count of rows at that point. And then just keep using this as needed. So I love it. I find it extremely helpful and it really becomes quite compact. So you can put it in a little... Um, like notions bin or something. That's what I do for with mine and it's super helpful. So analog row counter makes a great gift too. If you know someone who loves to knit, this is a really nice gift to give. So there's the analog row counters. I've got, um, so three new ones in the shop and a, a few others that are still currently in the shop. So next, let's talk about works in progress. So guys, I don't have a lot of works in progress currently, and I will tell you why in a moment. But the one I'm currently working on is 
a brand new one. I just started it today, so I don't have a lot of progress on it. And I'm going to be using um, yarn that was gifted to me for Christmas last year from my mom and dad. So I have um, this you can probably still find at Hobby Lobby. It's So it's a very well-known, easy-to-find yarn. Um, it's Yarn Bee is the brand. And this is their Delish Boutique yarn. And it is 90% acrylic and 10% alpaca. So you have alpaca in there, which will make it nice and toasty. Alpaca is really warm. So that is like the primary color that I'm using in the pattern. And I should probably tell you what pattern I'm doing. I, I think I mentioned it, but it's the Leander Shell, which you can find on expressionfiberarts.com. I love that website. I will mention it a lot. Um, Shandy is the owner and she has a YouTube channel. And I love her YouTube channel and pretty much weekly on Friday they have free patterns and she'll kind of do like maybe a little clip about how to do a portion of the pattern. So this was one of those. Uh, currently I don't think it is free anymore so I'm not going to really show you too much detail of the pattern itself. Uh, but it is the Leander Shawl, and uh, the designer is Jane Van Salus. I might be saying her name wrong, but she's the designer, and uh, it's the Leander Shawl. And it looks like she's on Ravelry uh, with the title From Me to You, as in she, E-W-E. So, From Me to You. And... This shawl is gorgeous. So here's a picture from the pattern. You can see it has this gorgeous scallop thing at the end and like a triangle. Um, but then it has like a really long end. So it is a, I don't know if I can show you the shape of the shawl in general without giving away part of the pattern. Yeah, it's on the pattern page, but it's like a boomerang shape. It's a boomerang shape shawl. So you start at the very far, the small end, which you'll be able to see here. So I've just started this pattern, like I said, and got my whew, goodness all tangled up. So I've got my little progress keeper on here. Just started today. So my progress keeper is right down at the bottom here. Um, which is one of the progress keepers I made, one of a kind, a little glass bead. But you can see you start at the very bottom and it just increases and you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger as you go. And then it becomes a nice big triangle and then it gets smaller again. But this is the very small end. And I think then it ends rather abruptly after the uh, larger section. But you can see, so this yarn I am really enjoying so far. I may or may not have to fix the winding. I'm probably going to rewind the second one. So I've been, so here's a perfect example, guys. I, I mentioned in a previous video with the ball winder that you should, and see, I didn't even take my own advice. I highly recommend that you wind your yarn, even if you buy it from the store, just to uh, keep your sanity when you're working on a pattern that you don't have to stop constantly to undo a knot or something if there's a knot in your yarn, even if it's from the store. So this is yarn that was from the store. And I mean, yes, it's wound nicely. Don't get me wrong, it's it's a nice cake. But because it does have that alpaca in there, it has a little bit of grab to it. So as I pull from the center, which is what I'm doing, uh, it is getting tangled on this other center portion. So, I'm not quite sure. It might just be the way that that um, mill processed this yarn, but it's like it has two center poles, which is not correct. There shouldn't be two center poles. So I'm probably gonna have to keep messing with this to like not get it to get all knotted. But basically as I am pulling this out, it is getting wrapped with this other piece and I have to unwrap it each time and stop constantly. So that does slow down the process. <laughs> But as you can see, I mean, I just started this today and I've gotten this far. It's not very big rows, of course, 
but it is moving quite along nicely and the process has been wonderful and the coloring is quite beautiful i have to say so when i first looked at this yarn i wasn't quite sure i thought oh it looks kind of bright and i don't know if that is going to be very me when i knit it up but as i'm knitting it it is it is turning out to be a beautiful variegated yarn and it's very budget friendly so um, if you're looking for something budget friendly i a lot of the yarn at Hobby Lobby is awesome for that and you can get really nice yarn. This does have acrylic in it but it has alpaca too and alpaca is very soft and warm so this shawl will be nice and warm. It's nice to work on something that's a little bit more winter oriented right now. I have another shawl I want to do um, that I had totally screwed up and took apart. <laughs> I'm still not going to start working on that yet. It is more of a like spring summer. It is still a wool shawl but it's a little bit more spring summer weighted so I'm gonna wait on doing that one and it does have this yarn in it and I'm this is the other yarn I'm using so I'm using this um, yarn B this is the same brand yarn B um, this is the delish boutique I cannot for the life of me remember the name of this one but it came I think in a pack of six I think it's five or six different colors. So when you're, and it's again at Hobby Lobby and it's the yarn bee, it's kind of in there, I think like, I want to call it designer yarn section. This is wool and acrylic blend. I think it's wool and acrylic or wool and nylon blend. And they have like, again, five different colors on a little um, paper stacked. So uh, I did end up getting like two packs of, this again was part of that Christmas gift. So I ended up getting two packs of those five different colors. So I have two of this gray. So I'm going to be using that gray, this gray with this. And I think, I think that will look really nice because I need a certain amount of yardage of yarn to make the shawl. And I just don't think I'll have enough with the um, alpaca blend alone. So I have two skeins of this. They're each... 590 yards. So there's a lot of yarn in it. It is a, I think they consider it fine or lightweight yarn. So it's a level three versus a four. So it's not worsted and it's not lace weight. It's, I guess you'd consider it kind of a floofy fingering weight. It's like a fingering weight yarn. I love my fingering weight yarn. I constantly use it. This is basically fingering weight yarn as well. This is, I think, lightweight is what they put it at. So this might be I don't know guys this looks exactly the same thickness as that one but they call this like super fine or fine yarn i think on the packaging i'm pretty sure it said fine but it looks about the same weight so i know this will work fine with it to get gauge and i use the same needle size as the pattern requested which i usually do sometimes go up or down but it worked that needle size so that's the project i'm currently working on so that's the little yander shawl and i just started so got a lot of work to do on that one but I, I'll enjoy it. It'll be nice to bring with me during the holidays here because um, we're going to be traveling. So I can easily just bring that along with me. This is just in a field museum bag. That was from my grandma. There we go. So that's my project bag. I use totes. <laughs> so that's the Leander Shawl. Finished objects. Yes. I have two finished objects today, guys. I'm so excited. So you could tell I was getting really close to finishing these the last time, last week when we talked. So this is the Deandra shawl. And um, this is by Jane Venslow. Nope. Wrong name. That was the other pattern. Sorry. Good grief. Deandra shawl. Sabine Frick. Here we go, Sabine Frick. So this is the pattern, uh, the picture goes with the pattern. And overall guys, I really enjoyed this. This was a free pattern. I don't know if it's free anymore. Um, just check on the website uh, on Ravelry, the Deandra shawl. 
And of course, I will include the link below, so you don't have to like search on Ravelry. Just click the link. But I used my hand dyed yarn. So two colorways that are mine. We have uh, Ocean Deep is the blue. And then we have White Pine on the bottom. So last time you guys saw me, this is where my progress keeper was. And I'm actually holding this the right direction now. I had it upside down before because of my knitting, but here's where I was. So I, I did a bunch. I got a bunch done. Oh my goodness. I worked on this so much this past week. I worked so hard. Lunch breaks and after work. This has not been blocked. So it will grow slightly when it's blocked. If I block it to figure out how to block shawls. If anyone has any tips on how to block a shawl, please leave it in the comments below because I don't, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet because it's such a, a large piece. I don't, I'm just not sure how I'm going to do that. I don't know. Um, I don't have those like foam tiles. A lot, a lot of people I've seen, you know, like kids playrooms, how you put those foam tiles together and create their little play area. I don't have those. So I'm trying to figure out a way to block these without purchasing those. Um, I mean, I will have, I will if I need to, but they're kind of expensive. So uh, I don't know. I'm trying to find a good alternative. Um, I also got this edging done. So I got edging, a bunch of like the short row sections that I was working on. And then, um, okay, the edge on this took a while. It took a while, uh, but it was so enjoyable. So this took, it was a, it's a two stitch I cord bind off. I believe that's the right term. Two stitch I cord bind off. And I hope you can see this. I know it's really hard to focus on this little camera. This is the prettiest bind off. It's very delicate. It's just two stitch, so it's not very heavy looking, but it just gives you this really nice finished edge. And it took a while to do, but so worth it. So here's the finished shawl, guys. It's pretty big. It is pretty big. It's not as big as, um, my other shawl that I showed you, my prior shawl, which, sorry, I can't remember the name of it, but <laughs> my prior shawl, that um, that one was definitely much bigger, a lot longer, so it had really long ends to it. This, I'm thinking, will grow. To there's the end. <laughs> it will grow, but um, you can just see this gorgeous coloring here. So uh, this is a freeform shawl, so it does a lot of short rows, German short rows, so I learned how to do that. And I just switched colors. So I took my Ocean's Deep and I took the White Pine and I mainly did the Ocean's Deep at the top and then I knew I did not have enough to do this entire shawl. And so I took that White Pine and started integrating it in there every two rows. I would switch color. And then this bottom portion, I ran out of the Ocean's Deep and I used my White Pine. So this was a BFL high twist, so it's a much more defined stitch. It's a floofier yarn. You can kind of see if I'm pushing against this how this will will show up a little bit when it's blocked, I think. But it's because there are some lace detailing that you just really can't quite see. There's some lace detailing down here at the in this area. You can see that and near the bottom here. But I'm not quite sure how I'm going to wear this shawl. I'm going to wear it like, I have no idea. I still have to figure that part out. I finished this so late last night, guys. I was almost done with it and I just could not go to bed because I knew it was almost done. So I stayed up really late <laughs> trying to finish it. But it was so, so worth staying up late to finish it because look how pretty that is. I definitely think this would be great just over your like shoulder area, just draped over. You can see it, just, it's so pretty. And this was so much fun to knit, so much fun. 
the short rows, there's lace work, there was i cord bind off. There's so much fun elements to it. It kept me very interested. Uh, I just really enjoy learning new techniques with knitting and this really did that for me. And I think because this was so intricate, um, the Leander shawl, which has some lace work, um, but it's mainly just increases, decreases, and lace work. So very basic. Um, I think that'll be a nice, just relaxing knit. And this was relaxing too, but it was a big learning experience. So I so, so enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, so I cannot recommend this pattern enough. I don't think I ran into any issues. I think everything, okay, I did run into one issue, but I think it was my fault. So you cannot tell, thank goodness. This pattern really lends itself to be forgiving. So if you end up with too many stitches, it's still okay. And I apologize, see this, this uh, video is going long, but I have a few more stitches. I think I had like seven more stitches than I was supposed to when I got near the end here. It's probably because of my short rows, I screwed up and forgot to do a knit at the end of the rows, <laughs> which I was supposed to on quite a few and then I forgot. But really can't tell with this pattern. It's very, very forgiving and I'm not gonna rip it out for that. That's just not make any sense to me. And the coloring just changed like crazy. There we go. <laughs> there you go. So Ocean's Deep, White Pine, and this is, um, and this was that 100% superwash merino. So love that. Deandra Shawl. Excellent pattern. Excellent pattern. Cannot recommend it enough. If it's still free, grab it. If it's not free and you have to pay for it, I highly recommend grabbing it if you're looking for a fun shawl that will teach you so much. You'll learn so many great techniques. My other finished object is super visible. I'm wearing it. <laughs> so this is the Pearl Soho Lightweight Raglan, guys. I finished it. I'm so excited. This is my second time wearing it. I have not blocked it. And I did mention, I think I mentioned in my last video, I probably wouldn't block it. And I was so close to finishing, guys. So I think I was around here with my progress keeper last time we spoke. And I did tell you I was close, and I was. So I did, uh, there's some short row shaping in the back. And then there's this really beautiful folded edge um, for the collar. And again, I totally screwed up the raglan shaping. So you can see it changes here from here. I don't care. I think it looks fine. I think it, it blends nicely. I don't care. And it's with Expression Fiber Arts yarn. So these are some of her variegated yarns. Um, I want to say, or tonal. 